What's up, Airbnb Nation? I'm Danny, and you are watching my tutorial of Price Labs customization occupancy based adjustments. Now we're going to jump right into it, but I want to mention some other Price Labs related information that I have produced. The first one is extremely related. It is a blog post I recently published. Let's talk about Airbnb revenue management. In fact, it's so important and it's so related that I'll, I'll put a link to it up here. I'm also going to link two things down below. The first one is reviews. I have a review of Price Labs. And also on my YouTube, I have a Price Labs playlist, which covers all of the other customizations that we aren't covering in this video. Now, what is Price Labs occupancy based adjustments? What it is, is it's an advanced tool. So you do not want to use this tool unless, unless you're advanced. There are some pros and cons we'll I get into shortly. It's a tool that lets you tell Price Labs how to adjust the price based on occupancy. The upside of that is it gives you a lot of flexibility, a lot of customization. As I go in each week, I go in on Wednesdays and I do my adjustments, I'm adjusting for occupancy. So this allows me to not have to adjust for occupancy. This is adjusting real time for occupancy. That's, that's a plus, but I know the occupancy. I know where I'm supposed to be at at any given day range. The downside is that you're no, by turning this on, you're no longer using the price labs algorithm. They're no longer really pricing your calendar. You're pricing your calendar with the Price Labs software. The Price Labs algorithm, they take into consideration a lot of information. The day of the week, month of the year, depending on where you're at, that seasonality. They take into consideration your neighborhood occupancy, local events and festivals, hotel occupancy. All of this stuff is no longer relevant if you're using occupancy based adjustments. So that, that's the downside. Okay, let's jump into it. So we're going to jump into the Price Labs dashboard here, and you're going to find this customization under the customizations tab here. Scroll down to the bottom, occupancy based adjustments. Price Labs provides a few different set customizations for you. You're going to want to use your own. You're going to want to do customer default and just edit the profile because each person is unique and different. And I'll get into why that is now how to read this before we, before we build our own table. So the top represents the day range, zero to 15, 16 to 30 the left column represents occupancy. All of this stuff is customizable. So this means if my, if I left it like this, if I left the table like this, it would say if my calendar has less than or equal to 10% occupancy within the next 15 days, lower my prices by 15%. On the other end of the spectrum, if my occupancy is, let's say 80%, 31 to 60 days in the future, I want, I'm telling the price labs to raise my calendar prices by 10%. Taking a step back here, what did we do there? In the first case, I was under occupied. So I told the system to lower my prices. In the second case, I'm over occupied. So I told the system to raise my prices. That's no different than what I'm going to teach you here. The tricky thing is though, well, how do they know it's 15%? How do they know it's 10%? That's the tricky thing. That's the strategy that I'm going to tell you about right now. When this is all said and done, we will have this table produced. Okay, I'll tell you how I got these numbers to start off with though, we need occupancy goals. Let's start with 50%. At what point do we want 50% occupancy? How you get that as discussed in my revenue management article is you're going to go to all the rooms data analytics. I've already done this. It's free. Go ahead and sign up for account. Select the correct settings based on your space. Scroll down and click the booking lead time. So in this instance, it looks like there's two pretty clear seasons. So between April and kind of December, the average booking lead time is about 35 days. That's what I'm judging it as. And then from January to, to uh, March, April, it looks to be about 20 or 25 days because I'm filming this in May. I'm going to use about 35 days. So what that means is if the average guest is booking about 35 days in advance, that means 50% of my reservations come before 35 days and 50% come after 35 days. So that means in an ideal world, I want always exactly 50% occupied at 35 days. Going back to our chart here, so 35 days, 50% goal occupancy at 35 days. Now this doesn't mean you have to do this. If you want to be more conservative and you want 60% or 70% occupancy within that 35 day mark, that's your choice. That will affect the table as we'll find out. And then we also obviously want 100% occupancy given a time frame. I'm going to say five days. Within five days, I want 100% occupancy. You can do seven, you could do 10, whatever. And then between somewhere between five and 35 days, I want somewhere between 50 and 100% reve uh, occupancy. So 75% revenue uh, occupancy at 20 days, which is 
the midway point between five and 35. 75 is the midway point between 150. So if we double 35, we'll get to 75 days and we'll want 25% occupancy there. You see how that, that works in relation with the rest of the table? Now, if we add another 35 days to that, to 110 days, that means we'll want half occupancy, half of 25, so that's about 12% occupancy. And then right in between 35 and 75 days is 55 days and right about 37%. Now, all of this is estimates because one single reservation can uh, swing your occupancy 10, 20%, and all reservations aren't consistent. Some people book six months in advance, some people book six hours or six days in advance. So all of these are estimates, but taken in total, it gets pretty accurate. Now this, this left side is our goals. This right side, starting from here to the right, this is going to represent our table within Price Labs, this table here. The first thing we're gonna fill out, obviously we already know it, days. Now if you wanted more than 110 days, if you wanted to activate, Price Labs has another customization, Far Out Premium. If you wanted to activate another column here, you could simply add column and say, hey, after 110 days, just raise all my prices by 10%, 15%, whatever. On the left column here, we want to, we need to identify what percent occupancy we want. So this is gonna be an inversion of our goal. Okay, I'm gonna fill that out here. Again, left column, occupancy. So I'm gonna, we already decided on that. I'm gonna fill that out. And so we're not confused. I'm just gonna take all these numbers out right now. The only thing I'm gonna change is 100% occupancy. That's, um, it's unrealistic. So I'm gonna change that to 90%. Now, where, where do we start on this table here? We're gonna start with our, our average booking lead time. That's 35 days. So we're gonna start somewhere here and we know that we want 55 50% uh, occupancy within 35 days. So if we want, if we have 50% 50, 50 occupancy, sorry, here, we're looking at this one here, 50% occupancy within 35 days, well then we're going to not change the recommended price. We're doing good. And that logic follows for everything else. So if we have 100% occupancy for zero to five days, well, no change. If we have 75% occupancy within the first 20 days, no change, and we'll move that up the entire table. So this is saying between 76 and 110 days, if we're at 12% occupancy, no change. That's because we have 110 days, 12% is our goal, so no change. For my listings, I usually use a last minute discount on Price Labs, and I have a discount of up to 50% gradual within the next uh, average booking time. So 35 days, I have a discount 50% gradual over the next 35 days. What that means is at 35 days, give it you know a 1% discount. At 34 days, give it a 3% discount. At 33 days, increasing it until if we're if one day from tomorrow is open, you're gonna have a 50% discount, no lower than your minimum. Thus, I'm gonna start here with a 50% discount. And that will follow, that trend will follow its way down the chart. Now on the bottom side of these, of the zeros, you're gonna be over, you're gonna start getting over occupied. So you're gonna to wanna to raise the recommended price. And I'm gonna raise it in increments of 10%. And you can follow this trend throughout the table. It becomes a pattern you'll see quite quickly if you, if you haven't already seen it. And this over here is gonna be the opposite 76 to 110 days is gonna be the opposite of this column. Now for the rest of the table, I'm just going to fill it, fill it in based on the pattern. If you have questions about this, put it in the comments, please.
Just one thing about this 50%. That might seem like a lot for, for a lot of you, but two things to keep in mind here. Number one, it will never go lower than your minimum set within your account per listing. Number two, this could be, this really is only used 50% during in last minute situations. Let's say you're in high season and you don't have a reservation the next few days. If you're in high season, your minimum is probably significantly lower than your base price. For me, my base price might be 100 with a minimum of 75 in slow season, but my base price could be 250 during high season. And if the base price is 250 during high season, um, on price labs, I'm talking about the base price. Well, the calendar is priced at somewhere around that 200, uh, 200, 200, 200 to $300 range. So if, if it's $300 or 250 and we're taking 50%, well, that brings it down to 125. So it's even still above my maximum. Let me know if that makes sense. And now we're just gonna fill it in. As I mentioned earlier, if you wanted to set a far out price minimum, so we'll just do 110 to 111, sorry, to whatever, 500. You can just say, let's just increase it by 50%. Anyone booking that far out, the assumption is they know something you don't know. They might be privy to an event coming to town or whatnot, uh, or they're just simply bargain shoppers where they're only gonna book your place if it's cheap. So you don't wanna be that person so far in advance. And that's it. So you wanna, you wanna check this for the first few weeks, essentially make sure your occupancy is on target, but uh, that is it. Save and we're done. Now there's a couple things I want to go over. Uh, if you use this, this uh, customization, you should be familiar with a few additional things. So that, that negative 50 or positive percent that we're changing based on occupancy, that is based on the initial pricing, uh, pricing recommendation from Price Labs. If at any time you put a price, you go at, you you put a fixed price on the calendar, 110, that will never be overridden. You have to manually override that for it to change. The occupancy uh, profile does not apply in this case. And one last thing, very important, blocked days on the calendar are considered booked days for this system, for this customization. And lastly, you can go negative 50% to plus 500% in that occupancy based profile. Now the only thing, this is a good tool and, I, and um, I'm testing it out, but the only thing I can see right off the bat that I, that I hope Price Labs maybe thinks about implementing in the future is I want to know if my price based on my occupancy profile is significantly different than what Price Labs would have recommended anyways. So. Let's say if my prices are more than 25% different than what Price Labs would recommend, maybe they give me a little error notification in the box where it's different. That, that would be something that would be interesting to me. All right, and let's save and refresh. This will update prices to the calendar. And I just want to ensure that I am understanding the system and understanding the calendar. So as we can see here, on June 6th, it looks like we've got uh, our current price is 102. Price with default discounts, that means the Price Labs recommended price is actually 91 and uh, mini minimum 900. Okay, so all looks good. Until next time, happy hosting.